Who are you? I don't think he's been in CSI yet. Uh, Matt Smith is my guest this morning. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Graham Norton. I met you at Comic Relief last night. We bumped into each other in the corridor. Yes, we did. And we had one of those starry moments. And then you saw someone else and went, oh! oh. <laughs> yes, uh, no, you were, waiting, uh, you were waiting for Karen. Karen Gillan. Yes, Amy Gillen. Pond. You, you've met her, haven't yes, you? Yes, I have, she yeah. Had, she went on your show and then she rang me and was like, I just went on the show and with Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> Yeah. Like, no. Sorry, you just got Matt and David, didn't you? You just got the oh, people. Oh, but they're yeah. fun. No, no they are. Know. They're not Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, they? no. no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> they're very nice. They're David very nice. would like to think so. Uh, so, uh, did you have a late night last night? Were you, were, yeah. you raise, were you raising money late into the night? We were raising money <laughs> late onto the eve. Um, and my mum and dad came down, so I took them for a drink afterwards. Uh, oh, cool. I was a little bleary-eyed this morning as I rose to my... To my English muffin that I had this morning for breakfast. You're living the dream. I know. Living the dream. Did your mum get up early and toast it for you? No, mum was actually staying somewhere else. It was uh, uh, my good lady did. Oh, very nice. Yeah. And uh, th- 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 now those people outside yes. at the building, are, are they everywhere you go? No, sadly not, although I might start paying them to be. No, it's, it's, it's generally radio stations that they like to hang out at. And um, sometimes <laughs> at sort of, you know, TV stations and stuff. Are they not here for lots for lots of, of people? No. no, they're not. Oh, well, well, I'm, well I'm flattered. I'd be frightened. <laughs> uh, there you go. Now, listen, uh, we'll talk about uh, Doctor Who because I'm sure people will be emailing in their questions and comments. Yeah. Because, uh, funny enough, when I bumped into you, you were just talking to us, the big boss of the BBC last night. <laughs> Yes, Danny. And, uh, yes, and he was just saying that he'd seen some of the new episodes and how good the new series looks. I know, that was a relief. <laughs> yeah, they're going to cancel it. Yeah, oh, no. yeah, kind of done. Yeah, that, that was the old BBC. Yeah, I'm moving on. It'd be horrendous or if he just put his head down and walked on. <laughs> okay. Uh, how many episodes are going to be in the new, epi- in the new series? We have got 13 and, but there'll be two different sort of broadcast days. But, I mean, I have to say, the first two, they are extraordinary. Stephen's done this mad and wonderful job with them. And, and uh, there's this new monster called The Silence. Um, uh, A new monster. Yeah, and I, I, and I actually think it's the scariest monster that we've had in, in a long time. Um, I think Certainly on radio it would be. Yeah, well, ex- well, exactly. I mean, I can't tell you what it does. Would it work on the radio? What it does? Yeah. It, no, mm. I think we'd fall off the air. <laughs> how long? Do, how long do we have to not talk before the radio shuts down? A minute. So if we didn't talk for a minute, the radio really? just shuts off. That's not true. No, it is. It's true. There's some sort of emergency system. So if both of us collapse now, yeah, uh, and the studio. Yeah, and then just no, no one says anything for a minute. Uh, Radio 2 just falls off the air. But surely a better thing would be, if no one said anything to a minute, to just play some music. You'd think, automatically. Matt, you'd think. Oh, no, that is what happens. Is that what happens? Automatically. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, emergency music comes on. I wonder what it is. What's what's the emergency music? I well, want to know. Mu- okay. Muzak, maybe. Do you think? <laughs> Which I only recently learned what that is. What mu- You didn't know what Muzak is? Muzak, yeah. I was like, what the hell is Muzak? Yeah, it's and special. It's special yeah. music for yeah. lifts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Lifts and places. Uh, right, tonight, 9.30, BBC Two. Yes. We see a whole different side to Matt Smith. You're playing Christopher Isherwood in Christopher and His Kind. Yes. Now, it's... Because obviously a lot of kids listen to this show. Yes, and, hi. And they will love you and they'll love Doctor Who. Right. And we don't want to put them off watching this show, but it's probably not for kids. No, I, I, I'd say this is probably a grown-up show. Yes. This is one for the grown-ups. And, it, and it's on at half past nine, so most of them will be in bed. And it is a weekend, though, so, you know... Mm, you never know, do you? Please, please, please. And then when they see it, they'll start crying. Yes, <laughs> perhaps. And Doctor Who's going to be on really soon, so wait for that. I yes, I would wait for that. <clears throat> now, for the adults who are going to watch it, yes. it's a terrific... It really is a, it's a, it's an amazing film, because... I wasn't familiar with this book. It's a 1976 memoir that mm. Christopher Isherwood wrote, which told, because obviously the, the famous books, Mr. Norris Changes Trains yeah. and Goodbye to Berlin, they were kind of a fictionalised account of what really happened to him. Yeah, 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 exactly. And it's, I mean, I mean, his prose is amazing. He And he writes in the most sort of interesting way. It's weird, but, and I don't know what it's called. I'll probably get this wrong. And there'll be sort of literary buffs around the country going, oh my God, you fool. Uh, <laughs> but it's it's the first person removed or something like that, where he refers to himself as Christopher. Oh, I see. In the books, obviously. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. It, 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 there's such a sort of lyrical quality. That sounds so generic, doesn't it? But there really is in the detail of his prose. And um, I wasn't familiar with his, with, with, with his um, work, actually, but... I've since grown to become very fond of it. Yeah. I would recommend it for a beach. 
Very good. Look, because the, the story, because when you watch it tonight, if you watch it tonight, there, there are lots of echoes from um, the story for Cabaret. Yes, of course. But, basically, but this is a much grittier version of what happened to him in Berlin. Yeah, it is. And I think it's about him going to Berlin um, as a man in that period of time in, in like the 30s and being liberated sexually. Yes. Why did I whisper it? I don't know. I can say yeah. sexually. Yeah, you can say um, sexually. Um, yeah. yeah, you, you know, and, 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 and um, but, you know, it, it's, it's about him finding his um, identity, but also it's about the sort of mad characters that he meets. And it's very interesting, I think, to watch a person who has, who has written all this great and very now historic work um, see it all unfold. And what's interesting is some of the people are alive. I mean, Christopher Isherwood's uh, long-term partner. Don. Don, you met him. You met I him. went out, yeah. I went out to see him in his home in uh, Santa Monica. And, and he's the most charming man. And, you know, it's so weird. Like, he'd just been painting uh, Brad Pitt for a put because he's 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 a portrait artist. And on his wall, he's got this thing called the Hockney Hallway, where... Um, Hockney's just basically sort of because I think they're all pals, giving him loads of these wonderful paintings, and he's got the only self-portrait of Tennessee Williams, which is brilliant. But he was such an odd-looking guy, Tennessee Williams, um, and he, you know, a, 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 about the age of nineteen, I think. Wow! He drew this thing, yeah. So, but honestly, his house is littered with the most wonderful art, and uh, he was a very charming man, and um, yeah, yeah, it, it was great because I kind of picked up the essence of Christopher from him. He said what was really sort of it, he said. All the great things I've learned in my life, I learned from him. And I, I, I really got a sort of lasting sense that he was just profoundly in love with him. Because obviously, I mean, kind of dare I say it, there was a huge age gap. And to look at them um, aesthetically, it looked quite odd. Yes. Because he looked very young, Don. He was. Well, yeah. Yeah, was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they were, they were really deeply in love. And it's interesting because I think originally... He said he didn't sort of approve of you as he didn't. He didn't. He thought you were quite. You, know, you weren't great casting. Yeah, because but he totally came round. That's good, isn't it? Really? Well, no, it is. But that's what, no. I wouldn't have brought it up if he'd gone. And he still hates your yeah. performance to I this know, day. I yeah. know. <laughs> you see, that seems to be following me round a bit. I don't really approve, and then people slowly accept me. <laughs> <laughs> and he lent. There's a there's a, a prop in the film. Yes, which is real. Which is real, and he gave it, it like he just lent it to us as a good luck token. We should tell me what it is. It's a dolphin <laughs> clock, and um, if you watch the film tonight, that is the uh, exact clock that is referenced in all his novels, and and um, and was there with him in Berlin, and then he went out to Los Angeles, and 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 it came with him there. And just at the very end, of course, it's fascinating because it, it's the bits, um, you know, there's bits of information at the end of the film. Yeah. And the street cleaner that he has the relationship with in it. Yes. So is he still alive? Well, I think he is, and he lives in Berlin. And, I mean, they've never really spoken since the 50s, I think. Uh, and well, and now he's married with kids. Yeah, but he was, wasn't he appalled when this book came out? Totally appalled by, by, its, uh, by its frankness. That's what it says, <laughs> That's yes. what it says, yeah. Um, you know, because obviously it's just completely exposing for him. Yeah, it would be interesting to me. I mean, uh, you should try and track him down. I know, yeah. Facebook him. You know, if I was on Facebook, I'd, I'd become his friend too. But, yeah, I'm uh, not on Facebook. Are you not? Do they no. kick you off? Do they think you were a fake? Yeah, they well, yeah, I mean, no, I've just, it sort of unnerves me, Facebook. Unnerves you? Yeah, yeah. Man up, Matt. Yeah. It's not that frightening. <laughs> um, Matt Smith is my guest. Don't try and friend him. He's not there. Uh, here's Alice Gold, Runaway Love. Uh, Alice Gold, Runaway Love. I, I was just moaning to Matt about a, a lack of alcohol. What's that noise? Oh, my God, that's is my it? phone. I oh, thought I turned no. it off. And do you know what's really is annoying? It? You know what that noise is? <laughs> that's yeah. me texting you. <laughs> <laughs> so during the record, Matt gave me his number. I then couldn't remember my number, so I said, "I'll just text you." Graham uh, Norton here. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I can never turn these phones off. There's a little switch on the side that makes it silent. Yes. There yes. you go. Now we're both on silent. Oh, oh Lovely. Right. Don't text me back. My no. apologies, world. <laughs> Sorry about that. Amber Greaves is 15. Hello, She's Amber. from Leeds. She loves you tons. And I uh, thought you were brilliant on Comic Relief last night. And I'm really excited about seeing Christopher and his kind tonight. 15, she'll be fine. Yeah, she'll be yeah, okay. Yeah. And she lives in Leeds. I mean, she's seen worse. <laughs> uh, so, so, please could you try and ask Matt if he's in, uh, will, Are you enjoying playing the Doctor? Uh, so, because getting the role must be fabulous. Yes. Uh, 
<laughs> you know, that's a great moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but then it is 14 all, hours a day. It is all consuming. Oh, it's totally all consuming. I mean, um, it's wonderful, Amber. It's kind of everything and more, really. And, and uh, it's sort of wonderful to be close to the myth of time travel. That's one of the greatest things for your imagination. But it is gruelling. I mean, I can't lie. We actually, because uh, we work two weekends a month, and we have this very show on on a Saturday if we're in makeup. Oh, well, now you've my number. You can text in. Yeah, well, I will, actually, yeah. Uh, but it's wonderful, actually. Yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic job, Amber. It really is. And how nervous were the Doctor Who people when you said, I'm yeah. off to play Christopher Ishwood? Well, I don't know, really. Um, well, there, there must have been some discussions. People must have spoken to people. Perhaps, but... Uh, oh, 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 what? You, like, the bosses, you mean? Yes, I mean, did someone kind of, you know, because it wasn't the thing that, that you were going to be more... I mean, you are quite naked in it, but you were going to be more naked in it. Yes, my bottom was out. I mean, it was quite a strange thing, you know, because, of course, to shoot those scenes, I was I was completely... I get completely it, Completely yes. nude, you yes. know. Um, and, and then some things make the cut and some things don't. Um, but, I, I mean, no one wants to see Doctor Who's bum, really, do they, really? I mean, it's... <laughs> but, uh, well, I don't know. I, I, I'll just open the window and ask those people waiting yeah. outside. Okay. <laughs> and then, and then we'll moon them. Yes. No. <laughs> um, uh, who's this? David Leach. You'll be interested in this. He uh, he listens to the show while he's in his workshop making marionettes, mainly for sale. Uh, and here's the weird thing: he's currently making a marionette of you, and uh, here's a photograph of the head. Wow. I'm just showing Matt a picture of his head. Um, it, that must be looking like you're in a mirror for you, Matt. Yeah, so that's incredible. Yes, yes, it is. Can I ask? This is this is going to sound terribly naive. What's a marionette? Oh, it's a puppet. It's a posh puppet. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. Oh, well, well. Um, see, there's modernist. the little hooks for the strings. It's like a Thunderbird. Those are marionettes. Oh, I see. I think. Oh, that's quite fun. Someone will text in. Oh, no, there's another view of you. Oh, in fact, look, he's me- actually, it's, that's better. And that's quite... Oh, and there's this to scale. He's put some scissors rather sinisterly behind your head. Behind my head, yeah. In that and, kind and, of um, QVC. <laughs> that QVC. And this is how big the actual marionette is. <laughs> uh, Matt Smith gave me the fright of my life last night. I was at a friend's watching Comic Relief, got home, and, and my room was dark. There was a mirror behind my door. I closed the door and saw what I thought was someone standing in my room. I panicked, turned around, and saw my Doctor Who poster on the wall. It had been reflected in my mirror. I had to sit down for a while to calm down. Thank you, Matt, for showing me my fight or flight instinct is not working. That's Megan in Liverpool. She, she's really upset herself there. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Perhaps I should have read that email before I read it out loud <laughs> on the radio. <laughs> it wasn't that interesting. <laughs> oh, dear, mate. <laughs> but thanks for, thanks for emailing yes. in, Megan, with a very long story. Uh, we always ask our guests to uh, choose some music, and you've chosen a fantastic track. Where, what have you chosen? I have chosen a Neil Diamond song called Woo-hoo! Crackling Rosie. Oh, is there any particular reason? Yes, because my best friend Nick, uh, he, he he plays it a lot, and, and, and he has this wonderful spirit, and um, it reminds me of him. And, God love the boy, he's gone to Russia to get married. <laughs> oh. it's, it's quite a heartfelt story. His girlfriend has been here for sort of... 10 or 15 years, and she's Russian, and she was deported. Oh, no. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know... It's like me being kicked off Facebook. I don't mean to bring it all back to me, but I know how she feels. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So he went to to Russia to marry her to get her back. He's gone on Friday to marry her, and I've had to write something and give it to my other best friend. And yeah, so this is for Nick. Oh. Good luck, buddy. You're going to need it, kid. Are they getting married today? Uh, no, they're getting married on Tuesday. Oh, well, good luck for Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, yes, I hope he's listening on the on internet or something. Here's Neil Diamond, Crackling Rosie. Thank you very much. That we'll is see. impressive. It is, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> this is the man that plays Doctor Who. Do you know what? I've never seen Doctor Who because it's too scary. Really? What? No. Do you know what? Shame I on just you. think, I remember Tom Baker, the story about the maggots, I never really recovered from getting behind the sofa. Oh, well, that's 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 good. It, it worked. Mm-hmm. And it is genuinely, genuinely frightening. Uh, what does that say? 57... Oh, I see. Sorry, I know what that means now. I thought, I was like, do I look old? I didn't know, I didn't know what, what that was about. I get it now. Uh, well, you'll have to watch Doctor Who, because I, I think it is frightening, yeah. but I think it's, it's just on the right side of frightening. Yes. It's enjoyable frightening. I'll need a cushion, will I? Yeah. And don't watch it on your own. In a house in the woods. What was the one um, where you were all kind of trapped in a little grove? Um, 
and then pe- things got, kept getting oh, closer and closer. Yes, that was the, uh, I think, the Dream Lord episode with Toby Jones. What, like a village, you mean? Yes, I think and, so. And, and the old people started going nuts. All the weeping, it wasn't Weeping Angels. Also, oh, I think it might have been Weeping Angels. Yeah, I, I think it's probably, it was probably that. Yeah, in that sort was of very a scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the, very, very scary. I think they're the scariest monster. Um, and it's been. Listen, I, I, so many people have uh, emailed and texted in. Oh, so thanks, I, should, I should read some. Amelia Blakely, she's eight. Hello, and she'd like to see you act in the theatre. Do you want to do more theatre? She goes to a drama club and she likes it very much indeed. Do you know what? I would love to do a play. Um, and I think that you should keep going to your club, Amelia, because uh, it's a great way to learn. So, yeah, I would love to. Maybe we, we could do a play together. Write one and send it in. Yeah, you work on that, uh, <laughs> Amelia Blakely, and she's in West Sussex. Cool. Yay. Um, hello, I love Matt so much. I was lucky to meet him last year and he was so lovely. I love him in Doctor Who. Best Doctor ever. That's from Jesus Sturgeon. Aw, thanks. Um, Kevin O'Brien is looking forward to Doctor Who. Uh, Tallulah Allen, she's seven. And um, she'd like to know... Oh, now, Tallulah, she's seven. She has a remote control Dalek and she loves Doctor Who. Wow, yeah. I want one of them. Yeah. Do Do you get stuff? Do you yeah. get to keep things? Do you want something? Well, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, I'll, nick me something. I'll get you a Karen doll. I was hoping for something better than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Frankly, I could go to a shop and get a Karen doll. Okay. I'll get, uh, <laughs> that's, that's not really good. the inside school. I'll get you a Doctor Who magazine. <gasps> Wow, thanks for that. Oh, <laughs> oh Louise uh, and Emmy in Preston want to know who previously, obviously you love yourself, but uh, who's your favourite Doctor? Uh, well, I love David and Chris, but I think my favourite one was probably Patrick Troughton. Patrick or David, I think. Oh, right. But Do you know someone called Jack Daly? Um, yes, I do. He's a little boy. Yes. He, he says, is. I says he, hello he, to Matt for me and tell him I thought he was brilliant last night. Can't wait for the new series. He's my mate. Yeah, we are. And and uh, he, 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 um, he came up to visit me, actually, on the TARDIS. And I met him on Christmas Eve. Hey, Jack, I hope you're well. Uh, see you soon, no doubt. All right. Uh, Matt, thank you so much for coming in to see us. That's all we've got pleasure. time for. Thanks for having me, Graham. Uh, Christopher and his kind is on tonight, 9.30pm on BBC Two. And Doctor Who will be starting again shortly. Yeah. See you soon. Cheers, Graham. Uh, text me. Yeah, yeah. I, t- I, I text Bill. <laughs> Here's Roachford taking us to the news with Cuddly Toy. Bye.